Hey guys, Jacob Gaylord here from the Hunter's Advantage. Today we're gonna to talk about the Spot Hog Fast Eddy XL three pin sight. First, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the sight and then I'm gonna give you my likes and dislikes after using it this past season. So let's get into it. So I bought this sight last January on Amazon. In the package it came with the dovetail, different sizes of housing rings. It came with three of those. It has the single ring, it has a double ring, that has a big old triple ring. Came with a cutoff Allen wrench and it came with a whole booklet of sight tapes. With these sights, you have the option to pick different pins. Uh, there's like a one pin, basically a double one pin, and then, and then I got the three pin. I opted with the three pin sight because it's basically the best of both worlds. So you have your fixed pins for 20, 30, 40, and you also have your floater pin which on this one it would be my bottom pin. You can make it for either one, but the bottom one's the only one that really makes sense for your long range shots. So I chose the .10 size pins. It can be like .10, .19, and then .29, I believe. So basically these are the smallest you can get. I would just call this side a hybrid. It's, you know, you get your fixed options and you also get your floater options. So now let's get into the actual review portion of it and talk about the pros. To start, I really like the adjustability of the site. And what I mean by that is basically everything from the back of the dovetail all the way to the front of the housing is adjustable. The main thing I like about the dovetail is it gives you the ability to either move the sight housing further away or closer to the bow, whichever one you prefer. You prefer a bigger peep, most of the time you're gonna want your sight housing closer so that way you don't have like this much of the outside world that you're seeing out of your peep. All right, secondly, I like the weight of the sight. It's super heavy compared to the other sights that I've shot in the past. Some people might think it's a bad thing to add extra weight to your gear, but for me personally, when I'm drawn back, that weight kind of helps me stabilize the bow and keeps my pins from floating. Plus, it's all made in the USA, so the way I look at it, that weight just means it's built the right way. So I told you what I like about the sight, so now let's get into the dislikes. So the first thing I found to dislike about the sight is when I went to sight it in, it took forever to sight it in. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out why it kept shooting left. I moved the sight left, kept trying to follow the arrow, but no matter what I did, it just kept shooting left. I could never get the sight far enough over to get it centered. Thankfully, after a little bit of searching on YouTube, there was actually quite a few people who had a similar problem. And the fix was pretty simple. This was just basically flipped where this side that's connecting to the housing was flush with this. And so all you did, all you had to do is basically flip it and then it shot straight after that. So the second con I had, I figured out when I was actually sighting it in as well. Shot left and so I kept trying to move this pin more left to follow the arrow. When I did that, I don't know if I went over too much on the pin, like kind of max out the pin, and then when I try to reel it back in, so move it left, the fiber that is in what my 20 pin is, so the top pin, the fiber kept coming out. And so I kept trying to push it back in, push it back in, but it kept like just poking out. Because if you take this off, all these little rings right here, so the fibers go in and then they just ring around, ring around. I take that off and what I had to do is I had to take uh, some fingernail clippers and some tweezers and I had to cut into whatever plastic tubing this is to uh, that holds the fibers and I had to trace it back to this first pin get the tweezers and then pull it out a little bit after I sighted this one in completely if you're having the same issue and you try to move the L-shaped bracket I wouldn't recommend moving the sight past that midline where it's supposed to be or else that could happen to you it might have been user malfunction so I can't really say whether that was a company issue or not so my last con was after many, many rounds of shooting, I kept noticing when I was drawn back, my sight housing looked a little crooked because in the, in the sight, it has that, that mid ring and compared to my uh, string, it looked like it was about like that. It was just a little bit teetered. After you get it put together and you get a couple shots in it, just go over it again and make sure all the screws, all the screws are like still tight. Obviously you don't want to be in the field when that happens. So I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous when I was thinking about getting the sight because it was pretty expensive, it was like 380 bucks. Time, I was just like kind of almost unreasonable. So I was pretty nervous that I was basically just buying the brand. Because for 380 bucks, my first bow didn't even cost that much. No, literally, I bought my first truck for like 500 bucks. So I used it all last season and I put it to the test. Week long trip on public, up and down a tree, up and down a tree, just gotten thrown in the back seat. And I picked it up yesterday for the first time, shooting tack. It, it holds true. So if you're not into micro tuning or you don't have the need for a whole bunch of adjustability, then this site might not be for you. 
if you're really into tinkering and if tinkering's your thing, try it out. Guys, if you found this video helpful at all, be sure to give us a like, thumbs up, be sure to comment if you have any questions about the site. I'll be happy to answer them. Turn the bell notification on so you'll know when we post more content like this. Most importantly, have a great day. See you in the next one.